sound system is, is something where where I can I can I can tell you about, but you have to feel. You see, that is the that's the nature of sound system. I can tell you about sound system too from to, to, from now to tomorrow morning, but you have to feel sound system to know what sound system is is about. Sound system is just box, set of bass bins, set of mid-range, set of tops, and you have them all spread around the room. I don't know how much stacks, enough man, depending on how heavy a man's sound is, how much stacks him have around the room. And them have amps, you know, bass amp, and a mid amp, and a top amp, them have a preamp to control them all, them have EQ, equalizing and sound effects, you know, them have a different thing, but it's the power and the music, that's what really is, the sound is about, it's the power of the music. bass end and stuff, you know, reggae is, is, a, is a, a bass dominant music, its melody is in its bass line, you know, I've always kind of said that about the music, um, you know, a lot of other music, it's not about that, the bass line is just there as, as an as a underpinning the rhythm and stuff, but reggae it's all about that, so you know, we see our sound systems with all these big speakers and, you know, massive amps and all that, and we, we push them things hard to make people really, really kind of feel it. I don't really know how you can, how you can get that across to someone without dragging them by the scruff of the neck and, and pushing them in front of a stack of speakers and say, yeah, just check this. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, boy, I think that's all you can do and smile at them. <laughs> The love of music, that is the greatest. Because no man can pay we for what we do. There is no wages, there's no set wages for what we do. We have to love it, or we must be mad or something like that. But musically mad, you know? of this music world, you know, we are only part of it, you know what I mean? Everybody's got their own piece. But our part is it's different from the rest, you know. So we, we need to carry our part through. You know, because that's what we do, you know what I mean? And this is and that's how we play our music. Every live band goes out there and plays their music. We play our music on the thing we've called sound system. They would call it PAs, you know, but ours is a sound system, you know. There is nothing like presenting Roots music to the people with the tool of a sound system. You know, PAs are great, and PAs are getting better all the time. You know, in in-house club sets and stuff. But you know, with a preamp and an actual home-built sound system, the vibes are incredible. Sound is doing its work because the the, in, in the way it brings the tune, the music over. It's totally different from radio or listening to it on the internet. You know, the music is amplified and, and there's emphasis on bass and mids and tops and 
and it just changes the whole aspect of the tune. So this is where sound is important, sound system is important. So it's very different to uh, um, uh, a discotheque, where every discotheque sounds like a next discotheque. You, you know, you've got this DJ, that DJ, that DJ. You, you, if you listen to them, they will all sound the same. But you know when you put Abashanti and, and a next sound into a dance, Earthquake, that you're getting two different sounds. Both of them have amplifier, both of them have speaker box, siren box, microphone, and both of them sound different. Your own a thing is your own a thing, you know. You understand? And there's no way a sound, a system in a club is gonna sound half as good as your own sound. Trust me, you know? And the way, when, you, when your music drops playing on your own sound, the way you deliver it, you know? That is part of the, how the, the music sounds. You get to feel the music a certain way. You design your sound to sound the way you, you want, want it to you sound. You do your own thing. Yeah. So yeah. when the next sound play, it sound like a song, but it won't sound exactly like, like how you, you are playing. That's your individuality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's how you sound. sound, and every sound sound different. No two sounds sound the same. Mm -hmm. So some sound system brethren have, um, you know, like technical uh, knowledge, you know, in terms of audio. So some of them can actually build their own amplifiers and build what we what we call a preamp, you know, and a preamp now is like a glorified mixer. But a preamp is something that you put your individual mark on your preamp. Everything has got a part to play in, in your selection, yes, it's got a part to play. The engineer has got a part to play, but the sound system is really the workhorse. Without the sound system, you're not going to get that feeling, that, 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 that vibes what everyone's looking for, you know? The, the reason why sound system actually um, makes the music sound better is because it's like you're returning the music back in the studio, you know, because you've got all this equipment, you know, to help you to sort of make the music sound good. And, and even back then, the people that were building the amplifiers became superstars. Our, our builder was a man called Mr. Harold Pittigue. And Harold became UK famous wide among sound system man as a hand builder you know, for building perhaps the most famous pram, you know, in the UK that we, we call it Magnum, it's Coxon Pram. It was the first one that we had a gunshot in it. It was back in the 70s, the whoa, a Festus used to like bust this gunshot and the Magnum, a little pram about that big, not very big. And, and that's what actually carried Coxon through our whole time from in the 70s up until like the, the middle 80s, that Magnum pram. That was Cox in itself. I mean, if we lost everything else and we had the preamp, we were okay. <laughs> you know the preamp always traveled in the, in the car with us, in the front of the car or in the truck, yeah. That was the sound. I'm Mark, um, some people call me Mostek. Um, I build preamps for a lot of sound systems, UK, Europe, um, wherever basically. Well, I've been doing electronics since as long as I can remember, five, six, I had an interest. Um, got my first side nine at 12 and just progressed, but I always had an interest in music. So I always wanted to mix the two together and that's how I got into building preamps. And I'd say around 2002, I started selling to other people. I 
I don't know. I can't describe it. I can even thinking back to a child, I can remember going to some parties and just seeing the look of the speakers and the equipment on the stage. And I didn't know anything, but just seeing it and hearing it, yeah, just something was born there. It's just like a, a seed was planted uh, to learn more, get more involved. The sound, um, yeah, there's there's a sound you can get from preamps which I don't hear on a lot of commercial equipment. Or if I do hear it on commercial equipment, I've had to try really, really hard to get that effect. I feel with a preamp, um, certain types of playing or certain sounds that you want um, can come out a lot more easier. Like a heavy around the bass line, for example. One of the main things that will make preamp sounds different are the operators, yeah? Because you've got, um, um, for example, one of my ones, you have a lot of different ways of um, EQing that you can use in different combinations that each operator finds their own particular way. And the same preamp will sound different in different modes. The sound system are the protectors of roots music. Without sound system, I think roots music will, will, will slowly fade. Because these people on the radios and the radio DJs, they're not, they're not for roots music. They're not playing roots music. They're playing what they think the public wants to hear, and, and that's dancehall and, and that's that type of thing. So to keep roots music alive, you need to keep sound system alive. There is, there is a lot of kind of music that is unheard, you know, on the mainstream market, you know. So there is some music that's hidden to the public until, you know, people start identifying, well, what kind of, what kind of music is this? And you say to them, yeah, listen to the words. It's roots and it's different and sometimes it's digital, sometimes it's with a live band, you know. So, you know what I mean, you know, the symbolization of just the music alone, you know what I mean, is showing that there are music hidden that people don't discover. Yeah. The next one you yeah, in at your record shops right now as we speak, as of this week, you know? This one also, Rasnito. Listen. Well, it's to Maria. Everybody there, and things go on. So it all depends what they portray in their music, in their, in their act, you know, what they try to put across to the people. Very essential. Very essential. The true sound system is the man who goes out there with his full hundred, you know? I mean, you have plenty of DJs who just walk around with um, a box of record, yeah? And he said, well then, listen, I'm a sound man, I'm a big sound man, and 
everyone is talking about this sound man with this boxer record and things like that. But no one have ever seen that DJ um, string up a sound. Him don't know how to put a wire together. Him don't know how to put a box together. Him don't know nothing about the sound system. So how you can be a sound man? <laughs> it's impossible, you know? So you have DJs and you have sound, you know? You have sounds, you have true sound system entertainers. But it's a, it's a, it's a sticky subject because it contradicts itself. Yeah. Because the way the time and the way England run, mm -hmm. or America run, you can't really find a place to carry a sound to play out regular. Play, that's right. So for a DJ to say, I'm going to build a sound, it, we can't, half, half the time would be pointless because we've got nowhere to play it. Because most of the places are over here now, they won't let you carry their sound in the place. So you kind of have to use what they have. So it's not half the time is they don't want to carry a sound, but they've got nowhere to play the sound. You know? But then if, if your heart is really true to your thing, you find a place to play your sound. You understand? Because I don't man it, so you know what I mean? So the thing's set. Things in the UK are getting tighter and tighter. Uh, laws and rules and regulations, you know, things like smoking ban, uh, things like sound limit controls, um, and even festivals and stuff. It's all becoming more and more corporate and more and more controlled. And it can be quite difficult to get the chance to put a sound system in a club. The club owner will say, well, we've already got a really expensive rig. Why do you want to bring bring yours in and stuff? So, you know, the sound system is uh, a continual fight <laughs> and struggle, but everybody, you know, needs to continue and uh, play where you can play. do with the venues over here, they knock them down. Mm. <laughs> so there's there's less venues to play at, you know? Mm. You know, like Probably Leeds. Clubs, yeah. yeah, like Leeds here, subbed up in Chapel Town. This is a good venue. The next venue is down at uh, University of Dub, London. And there's I mean this there was a place in Bedford before and there's this that the other and Birmingham and but the the bill up and the buff closed down. It's it's very, very, very rare to have a place like this. So give thanks we have this place Justin. Bless. You know? So... <laughs> energy that's generated in that space when a sound system plays is still very much based on having exclusive music to offer the crowd. You have to have things that they're familiar with and are to some, ex to some extent commercial. You know, what we call warm-up music. But after a while, the people want to hear something different. Right 
do all that, but to get a sign, Jack Trinity, we had to have dub, you know? Because we played a sign called, what's the name? Ute Man from Manchester in 1982. And we didn't have no dub plates then. And they laughed at us and said, how come you don't have no dub plate? Every sign is supposed to have a dub plate. And they threw a dub plate over to us. <laughs> they threw an old, because to say, to say, yes, you need dub plate to play. So every since then, we said, yes, Motan, we have to get dub plates, because we have to because we're going to play a lot of signs and all got dub, so we need dub. I think the, you were the, the only time you would hear them dub places on the sound system. And if you come out, do, do, um, if you have the right links, and then yeah, that's how you started to get um, you know, dub from Jamaica and you know, things like that, and people who was going back and forward. And they, you know, you had people come back on a and give me a can. They give you a master, you know, master tips, and you know, they, that's how things start to come around. And then, so, you know, the, the doublet them time was very important. Or whatever, guys, just to let people know what was going out and maybe coming back, coming out on the street in a year, two years time. Like I'm supplying a lot of songs with dubs now, so it's imagine now it's the same in back in the day, you know, where Tobbies would concentrate on who's playing out the most. I would have thought, and supply them with dubs, you know, because obviously they want to be advertised in England, so that they can sell records. So certain sound systems would get access to the big studios in Jamaica. The great King Tubbies, me and, me and the great King Tubbies, we, we, we were good friends, you know, we worked together for quite a while. And um, King Jammies, Bonnie Striker Lead, Niney Observer, your name is Scratch Lee Perry, all, 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 the, um, all the important guys who are in the industry. So we start dealing directly with the producers and the artists, and we start getting the songs them directly, not 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 even as special, but as pre-recorded songs, pre-release, pre-releases. <laughs> like I mean, um, there, there there was quite a few songs when Channel One started out. 